what the heck do you do? This is programming 050. What the heck do you do at the end of LP? Well, we're walking the razor's edge, and the LP is starting to fail. What do you do? You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick. That there in the blue shirt mm. is Matt Reynolds. You can't see it. But I can. That is my privilege that you don't have. Uh, Today we're going to do a show. uh, We we argued. Well, we didn't argue. We discussed what to call it. We said maybe uh, programming O five hundred. We also talked O O five O whatever. Or we also said uh, programming for dummies. So we're going to kind of go over the the tinker toys, the very basics of of programming. We realized that we hadn't really talked about that in a way that we want to do. Okay, I want to tell you a story. So um, we were discussing what to call this podcast, right? Programming for dummies or programming 050 or like kind of remedial. I didn't want to call it programming for beginners because I didn't, I didn't want somebody to think like this is what programming for beginner slash novices look like. It's when you're first trying to understand programming, how do you program, right? We're not talking about the advancement of the lifter here. We're talking about the advancement of the programmer. And so many people know you go to college um, and we right brain, left brain, it's, it's not often doesn't necessarily mean it's a, it's an IQ issue. Things come easier to people than other things. And so, for example, somebody who might be very good with the written word, reading, literature, Latin, other languages might struggle with something like math. And so there are people who go to college and they try to take uh, algebra one or college algebra, I think it's called college algebra when you go to college algebra, and they struggle and they have to go back and take an 050 course in order to pass college algebra. And so if that's you in the programming game where you're you, you're like, I just don't quite understand, I, w- I want to tell a quick personal story about that. So you and I are both, Scott and I are both very pragmatic, logical, systematic thinkers. So we're able to look at programming in a, in a sort of pattern recognition way and can see this systematic progression that occurs in programming. And some of you are not like that, and that doesn't mean that you're, that Scott and I are better than you. Um, And here's the example I wanna use. I I don't have a creative bone in my body. I'm not very creative. Um, I see see things like... You want one? (laughs) I do not want a creative (laughs) bone in my body. You know, I, I hear things like concertos put together (laughs) <laughs> by Beethoven and I like that guy that guy wrote that like ex nihilo like literally out of nothing this guy wrote this that does, uh, literally does not compute in my head right or somebody makes this incredible piece of art or like whatever that thing is and it, it's just I don't really have that now I was thinking about this uh, last night actually I made a dinner. I want to tell you about the dinner I had last night because the one place that I think that I'm very creative is actually in cooking. I love to cook. I cook all the time. Remember, I do pretty much pretty much all the cooking at the house. And I made one of the better dinners I've I've ever made last night. And I and I say that not because it was anything special that I did. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they don't. Um, I never ever use. I never use recipes ever. You know, I just go by feel. So I bought a, a prime tenderloin at Sam's. I bought an entire tenderloin, right? Beef, Mm -hmm. beef tenderloin. So I've had this thing in the deep freeze for probably six months. We had some, uh, a couple come over. It's a friend of ours and uh, brought it out, put it in the sous vide. Feeds them that fed me rabbit liver, but (laughs) Hey, that rabbit liver, it was good. Wasn't it? So, uh, anyway, so we'll pull this thing out, put it in the sous vide cold, just circulating the water. So it thaws, thaw this, thaw this tenderloin, end up taking this tenderloin, cutting it into steaks, uh, well, I cook it at 119 in the sous vide, which is is well under rare. It's less less than rare, less than blue rare even. Uh, but I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna double sear it at the end. So what I did right. was, this is corn on the cob season right now. So I did I did a chili lime corn on the cob. Then I 
took that tenderloin after it had been in the in the sous vide and I seared it on the grill for a right over the hot I mean hot 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 ass coals coals are an inch from the from the meat real real close sear it for like 60 seconds per side pull them off put them in a in a one of those Weber aluminum foil like 9 by 13 pans and then brought them over to the cast iron skillet and had Icelandic grass-fed butter and a bunch of fresh herbs in a cast iron skillet and I put them in the cast iron skillet and did another like maybe 90 seconds per side while I kind of rotated them all these steaks flipped into the same thing god they were awesome and then I made a, a port wine reduction sauce so I took some some port I took the juices from the tenderloin and put them in this in this the pan and put it in there with a, a little bit of butter and reduced it down and put it in this port and then I had some black currant balsamic vinegar and put a little bit of that in there. Oh man, I made this great reduction did, sauce. Did you have avocado toast with all this? I did. I know. I get it. But like this is the only thing I've ever done in my life where I've got some creativity and I just don't have so so I don't don't have it. anyway. So I had this great tenderloin. I made a I made a jalapeno garlic cheddar mashed potatoes. Oh my god, they were just so good. Uh that that chili lime corn on the cob. I made a caprese salad. With a, with a balsamic reduction drizzled on it, delicious. Now, here's the thing. Outside of cooking, any time I've ever taken a class in my life that involved creativity, I had to take some art classes in school, and I started as an architecture major. I mean, it kicked my ass. I, I do not know how to dr – I can't do it. My brain doesn't work. I can't even turn it into logic. I can't look at something and go like, okay, the shadow goes over this far. Let me draw the shadow. It doesn't work. And so if, if you're out there and you're like, man, I've heard all these programming talks on the YouTube channel, on the Barbell Logic podcast and MED programming, and I just don't get it, that's okay. You're not a dummy, even though the title of this might be called Programming for Dummies. Hmm. Your brain just works different. So we want to talk through the whys of like, why, why do we choose three sets of five? And then when that three sets of five stops working, why do we do LP? Why is it called LP? And then as things start to not work, what does that mean? What does not work mean? How might I miss reps? And then what changes would I make and why? And so we want to do a very simple like, okay, for those of you who are just really trying to get a handle on this, how do I program for myself or for my family members or something? This is probably not a podcast for for people who are actively coaching, it might be, but probably isn't. Yeah, it might be. What are those changes that we make and why? So we, we talk about this minimum effective dose. So first off, where do you start? Like why, uh, we talked about in a podcast just a couple of podcasts ago about these kind of three overarching themes in the way we program. We want to choose simplicity over complexity. We want to keep things as simple as possible, right? That's just, that's what you want to do because simple keeps things from being like it, especially for the person who's listening to this podcast, like that's the more complex it is, the harder it is to understand. I want to keep it simple, both from a mental standpoint and also from a physical standpoint, right? I want to choose intensity or prioritize intensity over volume because ultimately what we're trying to do is get strong. And the word intensity really just means how heavy, how much, how heavy, right? How heavy. And volume means how much, how how many reps and sets am I doing? And then we want to we want to choose economy over excess. So I want to I want to program in ways that are are simple as possible, heavy as possible, and economical as possible. And so those are our overarching themes. Now, if we do that, why do those themes apply so well to the basic novice LP? What do you think? Well, it just couldn't hardly be simpler. Um, I've been interested in maybe doing a show with you about, uh, why we do LP. Yeah. And the truth of it is, is I've never tried to not, well, I have, but I haven't tried other things, you know, in an experimental kind of way to see if we could do anything better. Cause I just, I just don't think we could. So let's talk about this. I think this would apply to how you would maybe figure out what changes to make when LP stops working. Right. So, like, let's say you had a, a novice, you had a kid, you had a 17-year-old kid, he's 5'10 and 148. He's 150 pounds, let's say. 
happens all the time, and you want him to get stronger, could he go in and do one set of five squats or even a single or even five sets of 10 and then come back later and be stronger? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. He's going to do one session. He's going to do any, any rep scheme you can think of. Of the one of the of the one of the four movements that we're talking about, and he's going to come back the next session. You know, he's going to do that on win- Monday. He's going to come back on Wednesday. He's going to be stronger. That's right. Can he do it again? Whatever, whatever the rep scheme is, whatever it is, could he come back and do it again on Friday? Probably. He's going to be able to do that some. Right. He's going to be able to do that some. He's going to come back stronger for a while. Now, Rip has tried a bunch of this stuff and talked to other people who have tried a bunch of this stuff. And through trial and error, they've determined that three sets of five is what's up. Now, let's just talk about doing a set of five. Like, if you did a set of five, you couldn't drive it up as long as you can three sets of five. Now, why is that? Because it's just not enough work. It's not enough work. Because remember, this kid is 5'10 and 150 pounds. He's got to put on muscle mass to get stronger. And one set of five is just not going to drive that weight gain that we need to see in that guy uh, to get his squat up probably past 185 pounds, probably. Sure. Um, and so we start So we start with three sets of five. We could start with one set of five, and when that stopped working, back it off and do two sets, and then back it off and do three. But it would make LP last longer because it would take him too long to gain the weight to get to that 200 pounds of body weight. Yeah, so you, you look at these three. So if you look at simplicity, intensity, and economy, we're trying to find the best combination of those things that gives us the greatest return on investment. One set of five is simpler and more economical and just as heavy, if not heavier, than three sets of five. Mm-hmm. But the return on investment is lower. The progress doesn't last as long. Right? It's the long-term progress that we're looking for there. That's exactly right. We're not doing this for short-term payoffs. We're doing this for as a lifestyle change. Now, there's the pendulum can swing the other way around, and you see that with the strong lifts guys. They do five sets of five, right? Isn't that what strong lifts is? Yep. yep. So five sets of five is more work, is also pretty simple, right? So it's pretty simple work. The intensity is a little lower than what you would do on a on a starting strength type LP, and it's certainly not as economical. It's certainly a little more, and we would argue that it's actually a little bit too much work in the beginning. And so the reason we do three sets of five is because it's the happy medium between not enough work and too much work. It's just the right amount of work. And that's the programming problem, walking the Correct. razor's edge of enough and not Enough. That's exactly right. It's the primary question that we're constantly. And by the way, nobody has a perfect answer for this. We yep. don't know, like like me, Andy Baker, the other people that are like very well known for doing programming. You just you're constantly trying to just tighten up the amount of fuzzy gray to go like, okay, I'm trying to walk this road, this path fuzzy gray. of between. That's right, between. <laughs> between too much work and too little work. I want to stay, be, you know, I don't want to do too little. I don't want to do too much. Well, so, that's difficult. So the so what we've done with the MED process is we go, well, if we make the smallest change possible, then what that keeps us from doing is it, it, it makes us take a step towards either a little too much work or a little more work or a little less work in order to keep the balance of just right. Yeah, Whereas but, if I make lots of changes at once, I take a big jump to the right or the left, and I will often jump completely off the path. Yeah, so at the end of LP, you know, if you're somebody that's trying to figure out what the heck do you do, this is programming 050, what the heck do you do at the end of LP? Well, LP as it's written, if it continues to work, is always more work. That's right. It's always more work. It's another five pounds, you know. That's right. So we're walking the razor's edge, and LP is starting to fail. What do you do? Yep. More or less? Well, darn it. I mean, there are a lot of people that are going to say, oh, the work has to go up. And I agree. Over time, it does. Over the long term. The, 
the average of the amount of work that you do has to be trending up, but it can't right. go up every single session, session Forever. on session, That's right. or the person will die. But over time, literally, it has to trend right? up. Literally. Like no, it literally. People have, people have busted our balls for saying that stuff. But literally, it is possible to overstress yourself. Yeah, you can kill to someone. To the point that you die. I don't right? think now, that, like, that's a pretty that's extreme. Gonna be it's extremely extreme. <laughs> it's a reductio ad absurdum. Like, you, if you keep going and keep going and work goes up and work goes up and work goes up, eventually it uses the person's entire capacity to live, and they would right. perish. And, you know, you, anybody would stop a long time before that. It's, 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 it, right, it's the old myth of the, of the marathon, right? Who was the guy that ran the first marathon? I can't and remember died. all of a sudden. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So was it the Trojan Wars? Is that what was going on? And he ran back, and then he died. <laughs> and he, sort of like, he dropped over. And so then, and so then, and then people were like, "Hey, we should just do that and turn it into a sport to see if you don't die." But some people would die. So yeah, if if at the end of LP in LP the work is always going up and it's starting to falter, what are our choices? Well, you got a handful of choices. You, what we know you, is you've got to make the work go down to get it to go up. To, you have to make the work go down for a short for a short period of time. Right now, let's right. think about that. You're talking about work. And work is the right word here. So if we stick with just a squat, so we stay simple. So we're squatting three sets of five on Monday. We're going up a little bit of weight, and we're doing three sets of five on Wednesday, and then we're going up a little bit of weight, and we're doing three sets of five on Friday. And at some point, that stops working. What do I mean when I say that stops working? What I mean is on Friday, you get to Friday, and you don't hit all three sets of five. You hit a set of five, and then you hit a set of four, and then you hit a set of three. Or maybe you go four, three, three. So it's, that's usually some, it's somewhere in that ballpark. Right. Okay, so the question is, what we've done is we've increased the work every single session, often for a couple months, two, three months at a time. So work has continued to increase, and all of a sudden, you can't make progress. What we have to do is we have to give you some more recovery in order to continue to make progress. And we define progress, again, in MED programming as intensity over volume. We want the bar weight to continue to go up. So is there a way to make the bar weight continue to go up over the course of time without overworking the lifter? And the answer is yes. Yeah, and course. we do that for almost everybody by putting a, a light day between the heavy days. So now we're going to go Monday heavy. Nothing's changed. Three sets of five. Wednesday, rather than going up, we're going to go a little lighter. Like we're going to do about a 20% back off. And also, we can just stay at three sets of five. No, let me clarify this. The reason yep. we've decided to lower the weight on Wednesday is because other people have shown us that that works. That's right. And then after trying it, both on ourselves, the people we care about, and our clients who we also care about. We found that it does, in fact, work. Yep. Right. So at some point, there is a creativity aspect to this programming where we have to come up with some p potential solutions that we can apply to the problem. So you have, sure. to, you have to create something. Yep. We don't know. Oh, gosh, I don't know what to do. Like Rip says, oh, I, I don't know what to do. Let's lower Wednesday. Or he gets on the phone with Star or one of somebody, one of his mentors. And he says, what do I do? And they're like, yeah, man, lower Wednesday. Tries it. Sure enough, it works. Right. Now that tells you when, if, when it works, that it tells you, it gives you good data on the fact that you were probably overworked and under recovered. And so when we reduce the amount of work on Wednesday and we w allow recovery to increase or fatigue to dissipate, it allows us to keep letting the weight go up on Monday and Friday. So now the weight can't go up three times a week. The weight goes up two times a week and that yep. works. Now, if it didn't work, there would be people out there that would argue that LP stops working, not because you are under recovered or overworked, but that you're actually underworked. Hey, that I don't necessarily okay. agree or that, disagree. That, that, is a, that is a perfectly acceptable hypothesis that can be tested in the lab and turned into a theory. And if that were the case, what you might do is go from three sets of five to four sets of five and, the and then see if you down. can continue to make progress. Right. And if you made progress, then OK, then that might. But our experience in coaching literally thousands and thousands of lifters is that the vast, vast, vast majority of them towards the end of LP, specifically on the squat. And we'll keep this simple because it's 050. 
they cannot continue to add five pounds or even two and a half pounds to the bar weight three times a week. And so therefore, we can take the middle workout and we can reduce the amount of weight that they do. Same volume, three sets of five. Same frequency, still squatting three times a week. The only change we've made is we made a Wednesday light day. And what that's done is that's reduced the amount of work from the week where you weren't doing that to the week that you are doing that. So maybe from week 10 to week 11. It's not week 10 and 11 necessarily. And then people will ask, but doesn't stress have to go up? Yeah. Doesn't work over the long term and stress have to go up over the long term? And the answer is yes. Yep. But if I'm able to ride out a Wednesday light day and then and I keep going up five pounds on Monday and Friday, so now I'm still making 10 pound strength gains per week, then another four weeks in, I, my squat has now increased 40 pounds. So I would argue that when your squat is up 40 pounds four weeks later on Monday and Friday, and Wednesday is a lighter day at, tw at a 20% reduction, that your actual total stress has gone up over that four-week period. So we have a little baby deload with that Wednesday light day. And then when you look forward at the long-term development of the lifter, four weeks later, the total amount of stress and the total amount of work has has still actually gone up over the long term. It has not. It only went down for a short period of time to allow the fatigue to dissipate. Now, Matt Reynolds, why yes. why deload Wednesday instead of something else? Like, let's say we could we could just flip a switch in our head and we could say, you know what? I think the I think the way forward here is uh, a heavy triple followed by two sets of five, three sets of five. Yep. You know, uh, the guy goes in on Friday, he squats yep. five, four, two. Yep. Great question. Okay. Now, so we're going to have him come in Monday. What are we going to have him do? Why not do a top set of five or top set of three? Yeah. So why the mid, the midweek deload mm -hmm. rather than, rather than that? Yeah. So for me, it's because it's the simplest change that can be made. On Wednesday, if all we do is reduce the intensity to allow the fatigue to dissipate, then all we've done is change it. We, we've still just changed a single variable. We haven't changed the volume. We haven't changed the frequency. If instead we immediately go to, but and by the way, I don't think it's inappropriate to go to a top set of five or a top set, of, especially let's say what you, what you said was a top set of three and two back off sets of five. Well, now what I've done is I've now played with multiple variables and I didn't have to. So that top set of three is not a top set of five anymore, so that, that intensity and volume of the top set changes and the intensity changes in the two following sets. So now I've changed multiple things. And sometimes you're going to have to make a multiple cha change, but as long as I can change something as simple as, well, what if we just backed off Wednesday a little bit? Mm. The other thing that does is I think you can make progress longer on a Wednesday light day. I think my experience says that with my clients, if we go to a Wednesday light day on squat and actually a Wednesday light day on, on deadlift, it works the same really for the two lower body lifts, that I can continue to make progress and increase the intensity on the bar on Monday and Friday. When I say increase the intensity, I mean the heaviest I've ever put weight on the bar. So I'm at 275 on Monday. I'm down at two, I don't know, 235 on Wednesday. And I'm at 280 on Friday. So and 275 was the most I've ever had on the bar on Monday. And 280 is the most I've ever had on the bar on Friday. And then I come in on Monday and I go to 285 and I'm able to do that. My experience has shown that when we go to that light day on Wednesday, then our clients, our people, ourselves, make progress longer than if we go to just a top set with back offsets. So I can do that first. And then when that stops working, I might make the Monday and Friday the top set with the back offsets. And that would be change number two rather than change number one. Is that answer okay? Do you have a different reason? I, th I think that's fine. And I think that any of these things could potentially get weight on your bar. But the, the main thing here is that our experience has shown us that that midweek deload is one simpler and it adheres to these principles and these principles aren't just things that we came up with these three principles the 
um, these simplicity, weight, and economy ideas aren't just ones we, we said, hey, let's do it this way and then find programming that fits. We found that our programming adhered to those principles always. That's right. That's right. Um, so, you know, if we adhere to those principles and we, and we do the Wednesday deload, we have found that our people do the best the longest with that first change. That's right. And we've made, to repeat too much maybe, we made that change because we're always walking the razor's edge between too much and too little. That's right. And it was a logical leap for us to say, well, the weight's been going up, 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 and the guy failed. Maybe it was too much. So let's try a little less for a time. Yep. And then we deload on Wednesday. And sure enough, Milton agrees that that is the thing that gets us, uh, that lets us put weight on the bar now. Now we know this, o- this only makes sense, like logically, this only makes sense that you can't continue to put weight on the barbell every single session. If you did, everybody would be thundering around with these thousand pound squats. It just makes sense that you can't do that. So right. at some point, then you won't be able to do that. At some point that comes to an end. Right. So if you just sit down and think about it, even if you knew nothing about weightlifting and never even touched a bar or anything at all, you would realize that we've been putting weight on the bar for quite a while, every session. If we continued that, we would all have 10,000 pound squats. At some right. point, we can't continue to put weight on the bar. So, I mean, every way we turn tells us it's probably time to take a little weight off of the bar. And then there's some consequences of that. If you take the weight off of the bar on Wednesday, you are now, you now have a, in the, in the example of our squat, you now have a 10 pound squat week instead of a 15 pound increase in your squat, like right. you did on the beginning. So progress slows. So progress slows. So it starts to become pretty obvious that we can't continue to think about the individual session or the week the same way we used to. Right. Because they're not the same now. Yep. So there are people that are saying, oh, well, the volume over the course of the week drops when you uh, start to periodize the week. Yeah, it does. What, what else would you do? Right. Just keep going up, 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 you're up, gonna, up. You're, that's exactly right. So if you take that to the end, you're like, well, what you should be doing is you should be doing a thousand pound squat on Monday for three sets of five, one thousand five pounds for three sets of five on Wednesday, and one thousand ten pounds for three sets of five on Friday. Like you, or, everyone knows you can't do that. Or or six hundred sets of five body weight ones. That's right. Like that's you know, right. there's or an you inverse just keep going up in volume. You could just right. keep increasing. But but clearly those things, if you take them out their log- logical conclusion, won't get you there. Yep. So at some point when we drop the Wednesday programming, or we drop the Wednesday squat, you've introduced periodization. That's right. It's simple, and I don't want that word to put everybody off, but... It just means it, plan training. It, it means now we, everything... Now our training has to have a plan. There has yep. to be a roadmap. Yep. And one session doesn't look like the other one necessarily. So you have different right. kinds of sessions now. It's not truly linear. If we look at yep. novice linear progression, we actually graph it out on a line graph. It literally makes a perfect line. Yep. Now it doesn't make a perfect line. So when the sessions are different, you know, they're identical. The sessions are identical in, in uh, LP. The only thing that changes is the weight on the bar. Yep. But when the sessions start to look different, then it's clear that you have to think about the week in a different way. You have to think about the individual session in a different way. So it's clear to me that the accrual horizon for the stress has changed the instant we introduce a different session on Wednesday. That's right. Now, so we can't compare a session of LP correct, or even three sessions of LP to the week where you go high deload heavier on Friday. You can't do that. I'm almost backing up in, re- in like remedial thought here, but let's also just make the point. We talked about the three sets of five were, by our experience, the best amount of work compared to, say, one set of five or five sets of five for the novice. But also, why fives? Why do we do fives? And fives also, in our experience, has shown to give us the best combination of strength, neuromuscular efficiency, and hypertrophy. It's the best combination. If we just did singles or we just did doubles, our neuromuscular efficiency would be through the roof. It'd be probably great, mm. right? Maybe not. Maybe there's not enough practice. I mean, you, but you could theoretically do 10 sets of two, 
right? Or something like that. You can do seven sets of two, and that's 14 working reps. But it doesn't get us very much hypertrophy, and we need some hypertrophy. We need to gain some actual contractile tissue. We need to build some muscle tissue. And the combination of those two things help with force production, actually help our strength go up. Vice versa, if we did sets of eight or sets of 10, our neuromuscular efficiency wouldn't be very good. Mm. Our, our hypertrophy would be decent, right? But the strength gains are still not as good. So another kind of overarching principle that's not our a primary principle, at least for me and for most of us, is that we're going to stick with fives as long as we can. Fives work really well, right? And so the next step I would make after the Wednesday light day, and all of a sudden I go Monday, I go three sets of five, and I go to Friday and I try the three sets of five, you know, the Wednesday light day, and then the Friday three sets of five, five pounds heavier than Monday, and I miss some reps. So again, I go, let's say I go five on the first set, and then I go four, mm. and then I go four, or I go five, four, three then I will often go to a top set of five and then two back off sets of five where I back off about 10% instead of a 20%. It's not a light day like Wednesday no. because the goal again is to be able to continue to make it so that there's at least a working set that's heavier than any working set I've ever done before. So what I would do if that weight is say 300 pounds on Friday, I go on Friday and it's the first time I miss, I go, 300 for five, 300 for four, 300 for three. Monday, I'm going to put 300 back on the bar again, and I'm going to go 300 for five. And then I'm going to back off 10%, take 30 pounds off the bar. I'm going to go 270 for five, 270 for five. And then the Friday, or I might even go 305. And then on Friday, I'll go up five pounds. I'll hit 305 for five. And then I'll back off and I'll hit 275 or 272 and a half or somewhere there for two sets of five. You're looking at me weird. Did I do the math wrong? No, you're fine. Okay. And so I'm going to run that as long as I can. So again, because I want to continue to change the least amount of things I can. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually decreasing the work a little bit on the back offsets so I can continue to increase intensity on the top set because intensity is force production, continues to show that I can continue to make progress on sets of five, five pounds twice a week. And the only thing I had to do was back off the amount of work a little bit on the Monday and Friday to continue to make progress. So I tend to go light day first on Wednesday. And then on Mondays and Fridays when it stops working, top set followed by back off sets. Do you do the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so it's the same, same concept. So now I've got to the point where I'm strong enough that I can't actually do. Now maybe I'm doing some pretty deep, pretty heavy weights and I just can't hit three sets of five. Now, what if on the very first set of five that I'm supposed to do, I miss and I can't hit five on the first set? Mm. There's a troubleshooting question. So remember in the example, on Friday we went, we were, we were scheduled to do 300 for three sets of five. And we hit it for five on the first set and then we hit it for four on the second set, and then we hit it for three on the third set. To me, that's an appropriate place to do a top set because you got your five, and then your back and then back off sets. But what if instead of hitting three hundred for five on your first set, you only get it for four on the first set? Then what do you do? Well, I mean, I I, I think that's classic recovery problem, isn't it? I would think so. Yeah, I think it's a classic recovery recovery. Uh, Problem and so so at that point you know uh, if we haven't already done the Wednesday deload we would do the Wednesday deload we've already done the Wednesday deload so we've already done the Wednesday deload yeah and um, then the then the Monday the or the sessions earlier in the week yeah what are you going to do on Monday are now? probably too heavy the intensity was too high and you um, if you want to continue to put weight on the barbell in that late in the week like that. Okay. At that point, we can either lose a little weight on Monday off okay. of the barbell and add some reps. Yep. Or, or we can drop the back offs on Friday. You, whether you like it or not, you got back offs. <laughs> you, sure. you did. You know that's what happened automatically. 
So you could just drop those off and then hope that Friday, getting rid of the three by five, driving for three by five on Friday, you can hope that getting rid of that drive for three by five gives you a little more rest. And then you'll reap the reward of that in seven days. So I think, I think those are the two choices. I'll add one more. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, so what I would do a lot of times, what I do when somebody misses the first set of five is it could, if it's just a simple recovery issue, you just have to, you might just even do a, a little bit of a reset and let them try to cast off some fatigue. So you might just back them off 20 pounds and run back up one more time. Or if you think like, yep, we're still walking that line, we're in a pretty good spot. If the goal is to continue to increase intensity and they're not able to hit their set of their first set of five, that might be the first time that I reduce the first set to a set of three mm. and then two back off sets of five. So I'm still getting in the good amount of work. But obviously if I if I was supposed to hit three hundred for three sets of five, and on that first set of five, I can't hit it for a five. Yeah. I only hit it for four. Then it's going to be very hard to, at some point, like the next week, go to 305 and hit it for a set of five, yep. even with very light back offs. So at that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, well, okay, now let's make the top set a set of three with your back offs. Mm -hmm. And so I might do that next. And then I might start to go, okay, now let's make Monday a slightly lighter day. Let's make Monday a medium intensity day. Let's make Wednesday a light intensity day, and let's make Friday a heavy intensity day. And so it's it could be literally as simple as Monday is a 10% back off from Friday. Wednesday is a 20% back off from Friday, and Friday still increases five pounds. And, and when you've done that, what you're doing is now you've slowed that progress down a little bit. The trade-off is I used to be able to make progress at 15 pounds per week. And then I got to the point where I could had a Wednesday light day, and now I'm only making progress at 10 pounds per week. And then I get to the point where I can't make progress at 10 pounds per week, and so now what I'm going to do is have a medium day on Monday, a light day on Wednesday, and a heavy day on Friday, and now I'm only going to be able to increase 5 pounds per week. Mm. But we're still going up in intensity every week, and so it continues to work just fine. And we're going to do that as long as we possibly can. So we have these things in our toolbox that are the changes that we make. And by the way, when I go from either from three sets of five or a top set of five and two back off sets of five to a top set of three and two back off sets of five, mm -hmm. then I've just made my first change to volume. Right. I've reduced the volume by two reps, two working reps. But everything else is still an intensity change. The frequency is still the same. The intensity goes up on the top set. It's just back off sets, and I've reduced the volume by two reps. I think it's a perfectly acceptable piece in the toolbox. And from that point, so there's, want to make sure that people understand there's a little bit of fuzz there between like what you do after the Wednesday light day stops working and before you get into a heavy light medium type split or a Texas method type split. But we do know at that point as things start to slow down, we have to continue to make sure that Friday is the heavy day and that Monday is the volume day. So what we're going to do in order to walk that walk to stay on the straight and narrow between too much work and too little work is that we're going to probably keep slowly increasing the volume on Monday and we're going to start increasing the intensity or continue increasing the intensity on Friday. And we're going to in Increase the intensity on Friday at all costs, meaning that if we have to continue to reduce volume to do so, we will, because the intensity on Friday is the primary stressor. And on Monday, we're going to start increasing volume. So we'll go from three sets of five to four sets of five to maybe five sets of five, or maybe we go five sets of four. But the volume is the primary stressor then on Monday. And the intensity is the primary stressor on Friday. It's not that you can never pick a single metric that is the thing that, that you can say, this is the thing that works and it's the only thing that works. So anybody that says intensity can be increased forever is lying. 
It cannot be increased forever. But it is the goal if strength is the goal, because strength is force production. Can volume but be increased forever? It, and the person that says that volume can be increased forever is lying, especially people that say that volume is the thing that we're going to use as the primary driver to increase strength. Volume is not specific to strength. It's not specific enough to strength, right? Like we know, again, you can take the pendulum, swing it all the way around. We could do 1,000 reps of body weight squats and not get any stronger. 1,000 reps of body weight squats don't make us stronger. However, in conjunction, getting the volume in to help provide us with enough work one day a week, which we like is Monday, and getting the intensity in on Friday will continue to provide us two stress stimuli. Monday is a volume stressor. Friday is an intensity stressor that will continue to lead to both hypertrophy and strength gains over time or the long-term development of the lifter. This is what's important. Now, I've had people ask me, why is the volume day always before the intensity day? It doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't, really it doesn't matter. matter. It's, we do it just because the way the week lays out, yeah. right? The, the reason you think that happened is because you looked at a calendar that starts with Sunday mm -hmm. and ends on Saturday. That's right. And the truth of it is, is that if you do your heavy day on Friday, the volume day is three days later on Monday. You do Friday morning, Saturday, Sunday, you rest. Monday, it's five by five day. Right. So I could I could just as easily ask... Well, why does the why does the light day come after you know before the I mean it doesn't matter. Correct. The light day comes after the volume day and also comes in front of the intensity day. That's right. And yeah. if you put it after the intensity day, it would still be in the middle right. before the volume day. It's yeah, just yeah. yeah, it just it just makes sense to us to do it that way. So Yeah, some some of this is black magic, you know. Some of it's we heard uh, someone who we respect and we, who we know has uh, results tell us what we could try. And then we tried it and we found that it also worked. And by the way, we didn't try it and found that it worked with four or five or 10 or 15 people. Right. We tried it and found out that it worked with thousands of people. So the, the pool of people that this has been tested on is extremely high. Right. I, I want to be clear. This is not the only way to get stronger. There are lots of people that get strong not programming this way. But we're trying to create a the way of thinking where we said, look, we can apply this these overarching principles in, in a very in a very cognitive, logical, systematic way in order to make progress over the long term, because our goal is to make progress over the long term, not just to make the fastest progress we we can over a six week period and then get out and never train this person again. Mm -hmm. All right. Like I actually might program it a little, a little different if, if I were going to do that. Oh, definitely. We, I mean, we, yeah, we will peak people for a meet. You've got six weeks. Right. You've gotten a if 12 I had to weeks. Peak somebody for the NFL combine or something, or, you know, to go to get ready to, I've got a, a high school athlete or a guy that's just graduated from high school. Who's with me for 12 weeks in the summer between his high school year and starting college freshman football season. I'm going to probably train him a little different. I'm going to be a little more aggressive on my how I'm going to push him because I'm going to try to get it. I'm, I'm going to eke out every bit of strength I can. So when he walks in to the gym on day one, on August 15th, he's as strong as we can possibly get him. But with with normal people, we're not doing this for 10 weeks or 12 weeks, and it's and it has this like finite end. It is something that we're trying to do over the long course of history, and we want to we, – we have both – sort of general data that we have we have gathered these metrics on with all of our people. And then you'll also, in doing this and making steps this way, you can get pretty good data with each individual person because what works for some won't work for others. Now, that Wednesday light day works for most. I don't know who it wouldn't work for, Matt. Right. But that's right. So this is a good it's a good question. So we answered this question in the QA episode about, oh, like is this the type of thing that you would do for for athletes, for high school athletes, the answer is yes. But at some point, not in step one and two and three and four of MED changes, but when you start getting to step 11 and 12 and 15, those changes become more specific to the goal, right? 
if the if the goal is I just want to be generally strong and generally healthy and I'm a middle age or older person versus hey I want to be a competitive power lifter then those MED changes by the time you get down the line might change a little bit based mm-hmm. on the goal so this the specificity of the goal for the person could change what some of those changes are right what if somebody wants to be a bodybuilder at some point you are going to prioritize volume over intensity but if somebody wants to be a power lifter we're going to prioritize intensity over volume always and at some point we're going to prioritize singles over over fives yeah because you don't get tested in fives in power lifting but in the beginning if somebody comes to me and they want to be a bodybuilder or a power lifter or a marathoner or a grandma the programming looks exactly the same for all of them yeah almost you know almost no one specializes either you know, we just we just recorded a Q&A episode, and, and a lot of the questions in the Q&A episodes are, what do I do about training around this or that other thing? My military career, my nursing career, night shifts, or or whatever. And, the, you know, most people just never get to specialize. Right. And, um, you know, thinking about that is a, almost certainly a waste of time. Right. Because... <laughs> It just doesn't happen enough for most people to ever even think about it. Right. I, I don't know. I hope that's I hope that's useful to people that are trying to figure out why we would even consider making some of these changes that we make early on in programming. Is there anything else that you want to say about that, Matt? No, I think that's good. This show is no fun. <laughs> um, like it might be informative. Yeah, it's an O five O show. For people who are like, Man, I'm just not I'm trying to understand, but and you and I continue to talk about this, just trying to figure out how to distill these ideas of minimum effective dose for maximum return on investment programming down in a way that helps everyone understand. I want, I want everybody to eventually be able to get the basic principles of this and why we do the things we do. Yeah, and we're not quite there yet, but we're every time we explain it, we get a little bit tighter on it. And so, hopefully, you understand now why we go to a Wednesday light day. Why we would do a top set and back off sets, things Does like that. Does that gray fuzzy area get a little tighter gray every time? Area. Get a little tighter. There's another Barbell Logic podcast. If you guys have questions about this, and I hope you do, uh, ask them at questions at barbell-logic.com. That helps us do a little better uh, when, we, when we think about how to explain it and uh, gives us feedback on how confusing or non-confusing it was. And uh, listen to our show. We are on Mondays. We are on Thursdays. And we are on Saturdays with our short question and answers episodes. Mark your calendar. We should be, we should have an appointment. We should have a coffee date every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings, you and I. So listen for those things and pass the show on to a friend. Thanks for listening. 